Hi everyone and welcome to Rickfall. I'm Keith and today we're going to be building a modular building, the firehouse. The set is recommended for ages 16 and up, hits number 10197 and it's at 2231 pieces. Some of the key features of the set are of course the fire truck itself, as well as multiple levels of the building which includes the garage of the fire station itself and also a second story kitchenette. So this really is a decently large set and I'm really looking forward to building it. Let's just get started. Alright, so in total we have about 19 bags here, either being labeled as number 1 or number 2, a decently large manual, a couple of base plates, a tile base plate, and this really long yellow Lego piece that I'm not sure what it's going to be used for yet. So with everything in front of us, let's get started. Alright, so the build is complete, and I've gotta say that going into this, it's a lot bigger than what I expected it was going to be. There's a lot of external features that I'm noticing here, and I guess that I'll start from the top working my way down to the bottom. For starters, I really am liking that golden belt, it just looks really great inside of that white tower, and then also the wooden water barrel that's providing the water for the entire building. And really, after that, there's only a few features that are left for this rooftop section. The first being the black door that leads up to the roof in the first place. Secondly, this exterior crown molding that looks fantastic. And lastly, the tile work that shows 1932 on the front of the building. It was an interesting and creative build, and I'm really happy with how it turned out. But aesthetically speaking, the second story has to be my favorite, simply because of the use of these tile pieces to create that rough and staggered look of real brick. And the windows themselves on the second story aren't too bad either, and I do find it funny that they used an engine intake piece for the top portion. And this is where we see some of the most heavy detailing throughout this entire exterior. Like this really neat build for the American flag, as well as these dual firefighter crests found on either side of the building. And these crests are made out of a simple fireman's golden hat, as well as an axe and also a hammer piece. And on the first floor, my favorite details have to be those two gas lights that are on either side of this opening door. Or rather, I should say a garage door that opens up to see the fire truck inside. The front entrance to the firehouse itself isn't anything too fancy being molded in that simple black. However, the sidewalk section does look nice with that white lamp over to the right, and on the left the simple build for a tree. The backside of this firehouse looks a lot better than what I've seen for a lot of the other modular buildings. On the second floor we have some really nice looking white windows, but it's the first floor that gets me really excited. The two black barn doors remind me of what a very old firehouse would have, and I do like that the roof of it can be lifted off quite easily. And there's also a pretty decent black side door with these small windows that can be opened or closed. Really, I think that that about covers all of the exterior features that jumped out at me, so let's move on to the inside. When I took off the roof, I knew that this second floor was going to be a lot of fun to cover. We have a pretty simplistic looking beige tiled couch, and in the corner we have that yellow piece that I wasn't sure in the beginning what it was going to be used for, it's actually supposed to be a fireman's pole, and then this small kitchenette, which is my favorite part of this entire floor. It's actually one of the best Lego kitchens that I've seen yet. There's a lot of drawers and cabinets that can be opened or closed, as well as a tiny sink in the middle of this entire area, and a stove range in the corner that can actually be opened and has a transparent front so that you can see whatever you're making inside. 
And of course, no kitchen would be complete without a fridge of some kind. The build for this white one here is actually pretty decent. There's a couple of drinks inside, as well as a couple of sausages that can be pulled out. But although it does look nice, it's not made to be pulled out of the second floor without crumbling apart easily. And right next to that, we actually have a ping pong table. The build for it looks great, and I really do like the accuracy of the net in the middle. It looks pretty decently centered. And the banister that would be leading down to the first floor actually is a convenient holder for the two paddles. And the last last feature of this floor is a wooden writing desk in the corner. Before we actually go in depth to the entire detailing found throughout this first floor area, I'm just going to push that fire truck out of the way. And that garage door does open up pretty nice and smooth. The prep area on this side of the building looks really great with the fire extinguishers on the side of the wall, along with these bell fireman hats. And I can't forget about the continuation of that fire pole down to the first floor. There's also a simple build for a box over to the side that's holding what I can only assume is an oxygen tank. And then of course we have that giant black stairwell that leads up to the second floor. And I'm just gonna break that apart real quick so that you can get a better view of that cavernous maintenance area. It does look like it's pretty well stocked, and I almost forgot to show you what one of the actual minifigs would look like going down the fireman's pole. Along with this firefighter's dog, which although I am disappointed that it isn't a Dalmatian, I am glad that they include it in the set overall. The fire truck that this station came with does look pretty classic, although it is pretty simply detailed. The front has that that same air intake piece that we saw on the second story of the firehouse, and on its right side we see a very small ladder, whereas on its left side there's some short hosing that leads to the pump itself. And this is one thing that I was a little bit disappointed with. The truck didn't come with some external hose for the firefighters to use in the first place, so I ended up putting together just a couple of simple pieces to recreate what I think the fire truck should have come with in the first place. And lastly, there's a very small storage section on the back of the truck that has a couple of fire extinguishers. And with that, I I believe we've covered almost all the important aspects of this entire building, so let's move on over to the mini figs. All four figs here do have that same smiling expression, and the three firefighters that came with this set are pretty much identical, with the exclusion of their top pieces. The first firefighter has a pretty decent mold for that brown hair piece, and I do like that it's pretty uneven on one side. The second firefighter's hair piece looks pretty great with that blonde surfer look, and the last firefighter, instead of coming with hair, has that awesome chef's hat. And overall, these figs do look great with that fire jacket print on the front. I did like how the female civilian came with her own handbag leaning over on the side of her torso, and the brown ponytail hairpiece does look pretty decent as well. I also like the casual colors of that light blue and also the white pants that go with it. So with that, I believe we've covered all of the minifigs, and I'd have to say that out of all of the MVPs here that we can see for the exterior detailing, my favorite had to have been that tile work that created that brick-like effect. I just really liked how it ended up looking really rough and staggered. And of course that white tower that housed that awesome looking golden bell, and the really creative build for the American flag at the midsection of the building. The second floor interior also had some of the best detailing that I've seen on a modular set so far. I mean, we had a ping pong table, we had a fridge, a kitchenette, a small couch, an armoire, it just had so much going on and I absolutely loved the entire second floor interior. When compared to some of the other modular buildings, such as the town hall, it's not at all sparsely decorated. So here it is finally, the fire hall being introduced to all of the other buildings that we have in our city so far, and it does have a couple of those simple technique pieces to make sure that it interlocks pretty snugly. Looking at this building, it's a lot taller than what I expected it would be at first, and I think it's safe to say that all of the minifig residents here can finally collectively sigh relief knowing that they have a city service that they can depend on. It's nice to see that main street coming together, but there is quite a bit of empty space in the background, so I'm going to take this opportunity to ask you which set you would like to see next. Jack and I are going to try our best to build one of these things at least once a week, and we would really like to see how this city looks like when it's fully built up with all these awesome sets. Alright, so that is it for this build. It was a lot of fun. And as always, if you enjoy our content, you can like or subscribe. And I've also left a link below in the description if you would like to purchase this set. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you again here at Brick Vault. Yeah.